In 2023, global aviation burned 435 million cubic meters of jet fuel, more energy than all of these countries combined use in a year. It is the fastest growing source of transport CO2 emissions, and if left uninterrupted, emissions are expected to nearly double by 2050. Meanwhile, at current consumption growth, humanity will deplete global proven oil reserves in only 37 years. And even with unproven reserve estimates, this increases to only 85 years. As a result, to protect our planet and ensure the future of aviation, we must transition away from fossil fuels. To accomplish this, focus has shifted to new sustainable propulsion technologies. One of these, hydrogen, could eliminate all aviation CO2 emissions. However, the true questions are, how does it compare to other solutions? Is the technology feasible? How much would it cost? And how sustainable is it really? Let's explore. To understand hydrogen's potential for aviation, let's first take a look at the other most promising solutions. The first, battery electric aircraft. Battery electric planes, which use batteries to power motors and propellers, are clean and highly efficient. However, they are heavy. Even with future advanced solid state batteries and more efficient electric propulsion systems, the useful energy density of batteries is 9.4 times less than jet fuel. As a result, battery electric aircraft are restricted to short ranges, making them incapable of preventing the bulk of aviation emissions. That brings us to the second solution, sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF. SAF are a wide variety of fuels that have properties similar to jet fuel, but are not derived from fossil fuels. In addition, they are a drop-in solution, meaning they can be used on current aircraft with little to no modifications. Let's take a deeper look though. The first type of SAF, waste biofuels, use chemical processes to convert organic waste, such as used cooking oil, forestry residues, agricultural residues, and sewage into liquid fuel. However, most of these feedstocks are geographically dispersed, low energy density, and complex to process, making them very expensive. In addition, there isn't enough waste feedstock to replace all jet fuel, especially considering demand from other transport sectors. The second type of SAF, dedicated crop biofuels, use energy crops such as corn or soybeans for biofuel. However, they require a lot of land. To power global aviation, we need an area the size of all these states covered in corn, or 63% of continental Europe covered in soybeans. The only problem, this land is needed to feed the rising global population which is expected to peak at around 10.3 billion people in the 2080s. However, did you know that this is just a fraction of the approximately 109 billion people who have lived and passed away throughout history? These people, our ancestors, had jobs, dreams, emotions, and families just like us. Thinking about this got me interested in today's sponsor, My Heritage. MyHeritage is the leading global service for family history research and DNA testing. With 90 million trusted users and over 33 billion easily searchable historical records, MyHeritage makes it fun and easy to uncover your family tree, discover your origins, and find new family members and records, helping you feel a deeper sense of belonging so you can be part of something truly meaningful. I used it, and by adding just a few family members, MyHeritage used its Instant Discoveries tool to expand my family tree hundreds of years into the past. It also helped me uncover super cool historical records, including my dad's immigration cards from Brazil in the 1960s, a photo of my great-grandmother's tombstone, where my great-grandfather emigrated from in Austria, and so much more. To join me and millions of others in building your family tree and uncovering your ancestors' history, click the link in the description and get a 14-day free trial for the MyHeritage Complete Plan. Thank you, MyHeritage. 
And now, back to the video. The third type of SAF, algae biofuel, use seaweed or microscopic algae as a feedstock. These require a lot less land than crops and can be grown in salt water or on non-arable land, causing zero impact on food production. However, turning seaweed or microalgae into fuel requires numerous energy-intensive steps, making it very expensive, much more so than hydrogen. In addition, offshore seaweed farms are hard to scale and risk disrupting marine ecosystems, open pond algae farms are vulnerable to contamination, and closed photobioreactor facilities are very expensive and energy-intensive to operate. So, in summary, while biofuels are a great way to decarbonize aviation in the short term, they struggle with scalability, environmental impact, and cost, making them a questionable long-term solution. That brings us to the fourth type of SAF, e-fuel, which is made by combining green hydrogen from electrolysis with carbon dioxide from industrial sources or direct air capture and then using chemical processes to turn these into water and synthetic fuel. This requires no biomass feedstock, minimal land, and runs purely on water, air, and renewable electricity, making it scalable. However, it is inefficient. Using green hydrogen and direct air capture, we'd need 29% more electricity for e-fuel than if we just made hydrogen, liquefied it, and burned it directly. So it begs the question, if biofuels are problematic and e-fuels are inefficient, why don't we build planes that run on hydrogen? Well, this idea is becoming increasingly popular. Hydrogen can be used as an aircraft fuel in two ways. The first option is with fuel cells which use an electrochemical reaction to convert hydrogen and oxygen into water and electricity, which then powers an electric motor. These systems are efficient, quiet, and produce zero NOx emissions. However, they are heavy, making them undesirable for long-range aircraft. The second option is to burn hydrogen directly in jet engines. While this is less efficient, it offers much higher power density making it better suited for long-range aircraft. As a result, we will focus on this type of propulsion. To understand the design of hydrogen aircraft, let's first take a look at its properties. Hydrogen has a combustion energy density of 120 megajoules per kilogram, nearly three times higher than jet fuel. However, at sea level and room temperature, hydrogen is also a gas with a density of only 0.084 grams per liter, almost 10,000 times lower than jet fuel. Combining these values at sea level and room temperature, we find that hydrogen contains 3,428 times less energy per unit volume than jet fuel. This is simply too low. To improve this, hydrogen's density must be increased. Fortunately, by cooling it down to negative 253 degrees Celsius, hydrogen liquefies, multiplying its density 845 times to 70.8 grams per liter. At this density, the volumetric energy density of hydrogen is only four times less than jet fuel. This is manageable. And while it means that hydrogen fuel tanks will have to be four times larger than traditional tanks, and therefore too large to fit into an aircraft's wing where fuel is traditionally stored, they can be integrated elsewhere. Hydrogen aircraft will have several design changes. First of all, to accommodate the larger hydrogen tanks, fuselages will need to be widened or stretched out, increasing weight and drag. Fortunately though, since hydrogen is more energy dense than jet fuel, fuel weight will be reduced. However, this will be contrasted by heavier tanks and fuel systems. In addition, with fuel moved out of the wings, it will no longer help reduce wing bending loads during flight. As a result, wings will need to be structurally reinforced, adding weight. 
However, with no need for internal fuel, wings can also be thinned out and optimized for aerodynamics. Lastly, fuel tanks will need to be strategically located to ensure the aircraft's center of gravity and stability do not change significantly throughout flight. Despite all these changes, hydrogen-powered aircraft are viable. And in the future, with advanced designs such as blended winged body, aircraft can be optimized for hydrogen, maximizing fuel efficiency and aerodynamics. In order for hydrogen aircraft to operate efficiently, reliably, and safely though, numerous technologies still need to be advanced. The first technology that must be improved for hydrogen aircraft are cryogenic tanks. Tanks need to be highly insulated to store liquid hydrogen at negative 253 degrees Celsius, while also staying lightweight. In addition, they must be designed for tens of thousands of flight cycles, hydrogen embrittlement, thermal shock, fatigue, and be crashworthy. Fortunately, with advanced carbon fiber composites, multi-layer insulation, and optimized design, these tanks are feasible. The second technology needed are fuel systems. Cryogenic pumps, valves, and transfer lines are needed to move hydrogen around the plane. Heat exchangers are needed to warm up hydrogen into gas for the jet engines and to refuel the aircraft. Efficient, high-flow refueling systems are needed. All of these must be reliable and resistant to thermal shock and hydrogen embrittlement. They will also require purging during connection, maintenance, and refueling, making onboard nitrogen tanks necessary. The third technology are safety systems. Hydrogen is the smallest molecule in the universe, making it leak very easily. It is also colorless and odorless, making it hard to detect, and has a very low ignition energy and wide flammability range, making it easy to ignite. As a result, advanced sensors will be needed to rapidly detect leaks and fires, with automated shutoff valves and redundant sealing systems to minimize risk. Lastly, to prevent internal overpressurization of the fuel tank in a resulting catastrophic explosion, pressure relief valves and venting systems will be required. The last major technology needed are new combustors, the component in a jet engine where fuel and air ignite. Unlike traditional combustors, where jet fuel is injected as a spray of fine droplets, hydrogen combustors will inject hydrogen as a gas. Hydrogen also burns much faster than jet fuel, which can cause flashback, where flames propagate back into the injector. Fortunately, with micromix and flow-stabilized combustion, this can be prevented. Most importantly though, hydrogen burns hotter than jet fuel. At high temperatures, nitrogen oxides, or NOx, form. These gases contribute to air pollution, acid rain, and the formation of tropospheric ozone, a potent greenhouse gas. Fortunately, while hydrogen burns hotter than jet fuel, it is also more diffusive and has a much wider flammability range, allowing it to be burned at ultra-lean conditions where there is much more extra air than needed. This ultra-lean combustion, combined with micromix technology, can be used to lower flame temperatures and NOx emissions by up to 80% compared to jet fuel. If all these technologies can be developed and certified by regulatory agencies, liquid hydrogen commercial aircraft will be viable. Still though, there are some core issues that cannot be ignored. While hydrogen aircraft have a promising future, they will likely not take off for many decades. Much of this arises from the fact that they are inherently inefficient. There are so many steps required to convert renewable electricity into liquefied hydrogen and then aircraft propulsion via a jet engine that the total system efficiency is on the order of only 18%, much less efficient than burning fossil fuels. On the other hand, to power our electricity grid, renewable energy is very efficient, much more so than burning fossil fuels. 
As a result, if our ultimate goal is to decarbonize society as efficiently as possible, in the short term, our attention is much better spent on replacing our electricity grid with renewables and on other easier to decarbonize sectors. With 60% of global electricity consumption and 97% of light duty vehicles still being run on fossil fuels, we have plenty of way to go. In addition, hydrogen planes are not 100% climate impact free. When jet aircraft fly at high altitudes and in humid conditions, water vapor in their exhaust condenses around soot particles, forming ice crystals and cirrus-like clouds called contrails. These contrails reflect outgoing thermal radiation from the Earth's surface, contributing to a net positive greenhouse effect between one half to three times the impact of aviation CO2 emissions. This is a big deal. Unfortunately, hydrogen aircraft still produce contrails. In fact, their exhaust is 100% water. Fortunately though, it contains no soot, meaning there are less particles for this water to condense around. As a result, it is predicted that while hydrogen contrails will be more widespread, they will be optically thinner and less persistent, with an overall reduced global warming impact compared to traditional contrails. Nevertheless, they will still exist. So in summary, due to their inefficiency, complexity, cost, and contrails, hydrogen combustion aircraft are far from perfect. However, in a future where renewable energy is ultra cheap, electrolyzer technology has advanced, and we have converted other easier to decarbonize sectors, they have the potential to sweep in, sustainably and economically reducing the climate impact of global aviation. What do you think? Are hydrogen planes coming, or are they a fool's errand? Let me know your opinion in the comments below. And remember, to get a 14-day free trial of the MyHeritage Complete Plan, click the link in the description, or scan the QR code in the bottom right corner. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe to Futurology for more videos very similar to this one. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.